Ah, jeez, it's been a minute. Let me check on what the community thinks about the new killer. No, twins! Twins! I'm just a f***ing useless f***ing twin. F*** off, mate. Well, that's just great. I wrote all of these jokes about all of the bugs, and that age has passed quicker than Cyberpunk 2077 on the PlayStation Store. Three pages of glitches? Look, Makoti, the next killer conjures a big block that blocks off doorways and pallets. Boom. Simple. Effective. No hard coding required. Because frankly, I wouldn't want to work hard for you either when I literally have my TV right next to me. You just make a character that pushes a single button and something happens. Hell, if you make it really easy on your team and don't have to crunch them, maybe you can avoid being the next victim of the Schreier bot. <sighs> God, I missed out on all the fun for a few fucking journalism classes. Anyway, the more I played the twins, the angrier I got. I know it was misplaced, but for all the fucks to give in the world, nothing was more frustrating than Victor spawning in the floor when I needed him or setting Charlotte as a trap only to get stuck in the same waking animation while they finished another generator on my sad killer playing face. The twins are a pair of conjoined French twins that can separate and hunt independently of one another. Charlotte, the big twin, is your average mouse one kick generator paladin head killer that we've become so accustomed to. When you push the power button to literally rip your little brother Victor out of your chest, it's a different story. Victor moves much faster than her, is limited to his pounce, and can't interact with the environment in any capacity, and we'll get into that. Don't worry. We'll get into that. Also, Victor functions as a mini radar wherever you leave him, but I couldn't think of any jokes about that. To focus on the good, I like how I can set out both killers and freely swap between them within reason. Oh, okay, okay, positive. It allows me to think of the map on a much deeper level. Set Charlotte to hide here while I roam around and check all the objectives with Sonic. Then take advantage of the fact that she has no heartbeat during that time to hit the people that have stopped by where I left her. With all of Victor's speed, you can essentially pop in and out of all the spots on the map, and yes, this does mean you are going to just, quote, accidentally find yourself by the basement several times in 10 seconds, but it's not camping, it's patrolling. Want to see me do it again? Chasing with Victor isn't really like your average chase. You move faster than the survivors, but without scratch marks, they can be a bit harder to track. As long as your hearing is good though, and you don't miss out on blood stains, you'll be just fine. The things that mostly gimp Victor are pallet sliding and spinning. There are certain pallet setups where Victor can't actually hit the survivor if they slide from side to side. It's not even a mind game. The pounce takes too long to charge up, and the angle required to truly leave leap over the pallet takes too much finesse when your opposition only has to press R1. Unfortunately, Victor is a bit too short term of an existence as all it takes is one good fucking kick to send him packing, which pops up quite a lot because you see, in order to do damage as Victor, you need to land that pounce attack. It's kind of hard to describe, but imagine I taped the Demogorgon's shred to a kite, took it outside, and expected you to commit murder with it. To attack, Victor has to charge up his pounce, which sends him flying at the survivor. If he attaches, he basically inflicts every debuff known to man for a brief duration till the survivors can pull him off. If you missed, Victor is temporarily dazed, giving anyone nearby a chance to actually kill him and take you out of whatever situation you were in. And there's a special kind of infuriation in knowing that the generator you were trying to stop from getting fixed will be completed. It's a mixture of the crunching sound, generator pistons flying, and maybe flashlight clicking. I was right there, and I could have done something. I tried to do something. It wasn't good enough. Like the rest of the range characters in this game, survivors will do literally every maneuver to avoid the shot. But since Victor is incapable of hurting them in true close quarters, it feels like the murder kite has fallen out of the sky and into my fucking eyes. Speaking of maneuvers, the entire dev team failed to include a feature where Victor can interact with lockers. Well, okay, they added the mechanic a week later, but I'm having my cake and burning it too. Survivors, having about as much honor as a Clinton, happily abused this in any and all circumstances. In fact, I might not have the arrogance to have you abstain from buying the twins like it's premarital sex, but I do have some other advice worth going to hell for. The next time a crappy bug comes out and it disfavors the killer, just abuse the survivors that knowingly take advantage of it. Victor also lacks the ability to interact with literally anything. You can't break generators, smash pallets, or most importantly, pick up survivors, leading to a lot of scenarios where you knock the rings out of someone, but Charlotte still has to lumber over there to pick them up. And if you don't think survivors aren't going to rush to get their friend up, well, see above. Unrelated, but do you ever, like, wonder what would happen if the survivors just beat the shit out of the killer and put them on a hook? Would the entity spit out the killer like he was on a shit reality TV show? Even the perks are subject to far-reaching hatred, which is only really punishable by the fact that they're just bizarrely marketed. These are perks that are geared to a player that's just starting up the game for the first time, but, like, why? Do you really think a beginner is looking to this DLC when they have Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, and Pyramid Head to pick from? But because they're built for beginners, they're dead on arrival for anything past the purples. Meaning to the devs, trying to fix the meta with this would be like trying to purify the ocean by transferring your tap water into it. Hoarder gives the killer a radius that notifies them when a chest is getting opened or when someone picks up an item from them. 
This also spawns two extra chests to help it trigger more frequently. I mention it first because frankly it's the only somewhat okay one, well at least to me it is. Chests do open pretty quickly so you'll have to react fast, but if you put this on the spirit like I have you can easily get the drop on people that you know are sitting ducks. Granted I think most rank 1s would rather chop off a finger before bespurching their current builds. I've heard this is paired well with Franklin's Demise which yeah I guess makes kind of sense but really I just accept it as it is. Don't you wish someone would do that if you were in its position? The next perk is Oppression. This perk activates when you kick a generator as it causes three other random generators to also get kicked. If a survivor is on a generator while this triggers, they get a difficult skill check. You see, the issue here is that it solves a problem that is anthemic to the ways that the game is played. Survivors tend to pile up on single generators and at best tend to be working on two at a time. You aren't exactly going to find half progress generators lying around because these fucking coupon Karens will take any bit of progress they can get. I really doubt this will ever activate in a way that might help you, but that doesn't mean there's no hope here. Because I, like every other YouTuber, am under some weird magic spell that convinces me that I'm being listened to. In my Willy Wonka version, when this perk is active, you can kick generators that are aggressing or have no progress. That way you can at least use this to trigger damage against generators that you know are far away, or get a bit of map information because untouched gens are pretty much everywhere. Now you can use this perk to basically get a map-wide ping whenever it's off cooldown, while still keeping it in line with other perks. I accept my checks and airheads, please. Finally, we have Coop de Swoop. This perk increases the range of your lunge every time a generator is completed. You might not know this, but one of the bombs that some stray YouTube commenters sent to behavior was actually named after this perk. In one of the most baffling moments of design I've ever seen, the devs took a perk that no one was interested in using and just sort of drilled it to death. What originally doubled your lunge range now gives you 60%, but that was never the issue. The problem is that this adds resource management that is almost entirely stacked against you. You see, you still lose the token even if you just use the regular lunge speed. The only way to conserve the token is to get really up close and lightly tap the button. Allow me to Translate, if you want to save your extra ranged swing, you have to reduce your current swing to the size of my self-esteem. Which kind of sucks because if this was even slightly more manageable, it'd honestly be pretty fucking good. Five tokens in a whole match that you can dole out during particularly irksome loops would have been a great way to shake up the gameplay. In this current moment though, I think it could be useful on killers that have ways to deal damage outside of their basic attack. Characters like Plague, Pyramid Head, Deathslinger, Leatherface, and Not Leatherface. The worst crime though was the twins add-ons because, well, they suck. Most of the add-ons for the twins are specialized, meaning that one add-on improves one stat, which is to say across every level, brown to yellow to green. Or to put it another way, there's very little overlap in what the changes do. Everything is just a small incremental buff to an element that you cannot stack with other things. And the buffs are minimal at best, only giving you a pitiful bonus to whatever standout element you choose. Meaning 80% of the time you spend playing as the twins is going to feel the exact same as every other match you've played as them. I hope you're the type that got into Dead by Daylight through sheer addiction because those vices are going to be the only things that might keep them entertaining three weeks after this video goes out. I would suggest an overhaul on some of the add-ons. If they are the only add-on that changes that killer's power in that specific way, I should get a noticeable effect from it since I can't combine them. Even if it's something as small as adding that magical yellow line to just, you know, tell me it's doing something better. The red cloth makes Charlotte undetectable for 12 seconds when you rescind control back to her. And by that, I mean you hope Charlotte agrees to be the playable character before it's too late. That aside, this one could be pretty strong if you're clever with how you hide her. In most of my experiences, survivors don't seem to have any respect for a sleeping Charlotte and will happily complete the generator she's been using as a pillow, and the wake-up animation is just a bit too slow to really punish someone that's right in front of you. If you can hide her off to the side, though, you get the element of surprise. This add-on really helps in that regard, plus 12 seconds really gives her enough distance to plan your route. The only caveat I would add is that, irritatingly, if Victor gets a grab or is crushed, this doesn't trigger. So much for taking a good thing, right? Only the contextual and sometimes buggy L1 button works. Speaking of the contextual crap, the red pendant will expose survivors for 12 seconds when they crush an idle Victor that's minding his own business. I mean, come on, dude. Perspective really is the word here. For Charlotte, 12 seconds of sneak is great, but an instant down waiting for you on the other side of of the map is ludicrous at 12 seconds. What you're supposed to do is unbind Victor at a pallet or window, then use his body to block and either score a hit or force the survivor to crush him to get past. The issue is, one, this takes more time than it should and you might push them out of the chase entirely, two, it's very easy to abandon that loop when you see Victor coming and even more desirable when you think about how it's not even viable to loop him in the first place. 
One of the largest issues is that Victor doesn't trigger basic attacks, a heartbeat, exposed hits, or see auras and locations, which basically takes half the perk's behavior it has been building for the better half of three years and launches them into the goddamn sun. The main thing I notice is that certain perks that trigger on proximity to survivors don't mean as much because that proximity only affects Charlotte's position. So perks like Deathbound, which trigger when you're really far away, are very useful. I would advise make your choice, but since Victor is Victor and Victor has no fucking advantages whatsoever, and of course he can't take advantage of exposed survivors. This is a perk I normally despise, but Dead Man's Switch could be okay in certain situations. This perk activates after you hook the obsession. If anyone gets off their generator, that generator gets blocked. Because Victor is Victor, which is to say really fast, you can easily do a quick lap around the map to scare off whoever needs to be scared off. But what do you know, even after I found a way to incorporate that into her very stupidly specific power, it still doesn't make sense because Victor is Victor and he can't see the generators that get blocked by this. Okay, fine, last toy in the toy box, you mewling children. How about Hex Devour Hope? No, really, I mean that. Victor X is a great monitoring tool for hexes, and Charlotte's position is the only one that matters to those perks. At least that's how Make Your Choice and Deathbound work, so I really don't see why there would be a distinguished difference here. Originally, I had this nicely written ending where we all make fun of the people that thought they were revolutionaries by boycotting the game, but I guess that update made the both of us pretty irrelevant, huh? So where does that leave you and whether or not you should buy this killer? Well, I'm not looking to cash in on a video called The State of Dead by Daylight just yet. You might have noticed all of my footage is still the buggy kind. I did that because I take a sexual thrill out of highlighting the mistakes of a creative team whose capabilities and complexity far outweighs my own. It's a power thing, you know? I mean, frankly, it seems we've been power blasted away from controversy anyway. Now that every fucking day I log into the game, I can almost see it drop on its knees and plead with me to enter its newest code, which is either a genuine hallmark of the season or Weasley social media kung fu. Hey, look, Victor's ugly, but you know, we can make it so much worse. Give me your guesses for the next killer. Whoever guesses it the closest will get their tweet read aloud in the video that I do about them. The vacuum from the Teletubbies. What? A, a rake killer? What? Why was that a shit post for a fucking- The truth come out. Does new killer is furry? A stealth killer who gains speed and undetectability upon crawling has a pounce like demo. Oh, that was actually pretty close. Ugly. 